Aaron Tuttle here for Ferguson Roof Systems. For 43 years, Ferguson Roof Systems has been protecting Oklahoma's homes and businesses with quality roofing services. Their goal was to be the most honest and dependable roofing company in the state, all while providing free services such as lifetime labor warranty and annual inspections. Well, mission accomplished with thousands of client testimonials, an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, and a five-star rating on Google. Look, the weather gives you enough to worry about, so why worry about who to trust with your roof? Call Ferguson Roof Systems today or find out more at fergusonroofsystems.com. Hey everyone, let's see if I can remember how to do this. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Uh, it's our lunchtime live. Let's talk a little bit about the weather as we head into the weekend. Plus, I want to just touch base with you, say hi, uh, let you know I'm still here. So, uh, I know we had some good rain last week and over the weekend. Uh, I, you know, took a little time off there because I was enjoying the holidays, just like most of you as well. And uh, so, weather sometimes, you know, try to interfere a little bit with our plans, I'm sure, for your lake and pool, but uh, we managed and we got some really good rain out of it. So, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, and kind of see where our forecast is going over the next few days and see if what's changing in our weather. So thanks for tuning in. I see you out there on Facebook World. So Christy's checking in for more. Hey, Beverly, good to see you. Kevin, what's up? Larry, don't worry, nothing nothing terrible today. Uh, Toga's in the house. I see you, Misty. Dolores, thank you for checking in. Mark, howdy, howdy. Alicia here. Sharon, all right. D-Bow, what up? Uh, Christy's in the house. Gail, Angela from Midwest City. Hey, Mike at Choctaw. Debbie and Cheryl and Yukon. So I like it when you guys tell me where you're checking in from. So I appreciate that. And uh, Frederick out there on YouTube World. All right. Thanks for being a supporter. And thanks for all of you actually for supporting uh, AT's weather over the last uh, multiple years. <laughs> We've been doing this since 2010. I cannot believe it's been that long. Um, you're going to watch me get gray hair on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe lose my hair. We'll see what happens with that. All right, let's take a look outside. Uh, show you what's happening out there currently. Uh, I see you there, Blanchard, Mr. AR. Uh, some a little bit of clouds. You see them way off in the distance here on uh, AT's weather cam. Uh, so we did. That's actually leftover, believe it or not, from some showers we had and a little bit of thunder and some lightning out there earlier this morning. That activity has kind of moved on out and away from central Oklahoma, and so we have a pretty nice view now as a result. And uh, so that's some good news. So let's take a look at that a little bit more in detail. Here is a look at the radar replay from this morning. Uh, I just basically put on a constant loop mode. So you can see how most of the activity was anchored across uh, northeast Oklahoma. And here for the last few minutes, there's that little bit of a hint of stuff out here toward Marietta. Otherwise, it started up here, Ponca City area in the southern Kansas, and even on into the Oklahoma City metro area. So a little bit of shower activity there. Like I said, a couple of lightning strikes associated with that, but not a big deal. Didn't amount to much in the rainfall bucket at all. All right, we're going to get some more of that. Let's take a look. Here's a look at the cloud cover shows you that little thin band of clouds that continues along with it. Now we will see uh, out here to the west and northwest probably another regeneration for later this afternoon. So we will talk about some additional storms. Now out there currently, uh, let's see, we've got, let me refresh this, yeah that's 90 degrees in Spencer. We've got uh, Yukon at 92, Kingfisher 96, Guthrie 93. Uh, down here in Norman also at 90. Hot stuff down here in Altus around around 97 degrees. Otherwise lots of 80s still hanging in there at our lunchtime hour. Now we've mentioned the rainfall that we've seen over the last several days. So I went back one week, so basically just to our July 4th. Uh, Kingfisher looks like one, one of the heavier spots, over five inches of rainfall. These little areas where you see a uh, little orange, that's up around five inches. If you can see like a darker shade of orange in here, that's up to around six inches of rain. And that occurred out here also in the cross eastern, far southeastern Oklahoma. So some really good rainfall. Some of you may have gotten some flash flooding briefly uh, when it comes down quite heavy in that fashion. Now, we do have a little bit of stuff going on at the surface. It's, it's not much, but in, in summertime, it's usually pretty subtle. So it looks like here we have what looks to be a very weak uh, cold front here in northwest Oklahoma. And we have a little bit of a dry line uh, out to the uh, south and west of it. So you can see how our wind field is coming out of a south to southeast direction here and a little bit more of a southwesterly direction here. And there's trying to be a north direction up north. Um, it's having a hard time, so it's, it's not much to, to write home about. But these are little boundaries to work with for this afternoon when we get a little 
bit of daytime heating. Now, uh, we did hit 100 degrees officially in June, one day of the month, but we did hit 100 a couple of times, uh, three times here on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, so it was definitely hot as a firecracker, but 101 July 2nd. After that, it's been much cooler. Do you see this high of 82? Look at that. Oh, my goodness. That was the day after, after the 4th. What a wonderful temperature to be at. Uh, we had that in the forecast in the blog from that prior Sunday, and that panned out really well. So I was excited to see that. And actually, the weekend was quite nice. 90 the next day, 79. Can you imagine a high of 79 this time of the year? Ah, oh, great stuff. So I didn't have to talk about that just because, um, you know, it was it was so nice. If Those of you folks that were still around uh, town. All right, well, let's take a look at the jet stream pattern real quick. So we're going to watch this area of higher heights um, out here across the uh, desert southwest. And there's a little trough, uh, let's see, that's zooming in. Let's see, let's go this guy right here. And up here is remnants of Beryl, by the way. Beryl was a interesting storm. Uh, it was only a Category 1 storm, but man, it wrecked Houston uh, with power outages. Unbelievable. I guess that city just can't take anything anymore. Um, I guess their grid is just overworked and poorly designed or and or... Um, I don't know. There's some issues down there that somebody's going to have to work out because they're in a hot mess with humidity and heat. It's brutal. Uh, so, But I can tell you that energy crews are down there working overnight, 24-7, you know, and they will do so until the last light is turned on. So the crews are working as fast as they can. But regardless, that was a pretty decent storm. Now, if you look here at the upper levels, we'll put this into motion. I want to watch, uh, let's see. The colors represent lift in the atmosphere, okay? So you do notice there's a little bit of hint at some activity here in uh, Oklahoma region. Not much. It's very, very subtle. All right, so that's for uh, today. Uh, as we head to tomorrow, still a little bit of light colors you see there, the little oranges and some yellows, little boxes of red. So what this means is it's kind of an isolated uh, shower or thunderstorm pattern, all right? So sometimes you get, uh, as the jet stream kind of flows around high in this fashion, uh, it can help to drive down some of these in this mode. So that means you kind of get of a, of a northwest to southeast movement uh, with anything that does happen to develop. Now, as we go on into the weekend, let's go to Saturday and there's Sunday. Not as much as we kind of wrap up our weekend here for Oklahoma, a little bit more down here into Texas. So might be some isolated activity down in that region. As we went to next week, just a little sneak peek of what's going to happen there. It looks like a little bit of a, a upper low will form in this region as our ridge still stays out in this region. So this may help to generate a little bit of rain down here in this little colored shaded area for Texas as we head into the early part of next week. Whereas we see this nice little disturbance here uh, coming into our area for the middle of next week. So maybe that'll help trigger some decent thunderstorms and maybe a weak cold front for us by the time we head to maybe into Thursday of next week as that pattern kind of stays in a northwest flow aloft which will allow some disturbances to ride across the Rockies on in Oklahoma and provide us an occasional opportunity for rainfall. So the pattern is changing a little bit to provide at least a slightly cooler in the, in the extended, plus the potential for a little bit of rain. So, you know, this is unusual. It's actually kind of common to happen for June and July. This is a typical pattern for that. August usually shuts down. We get the big fat ridge right on top of us like this. We call it the death ridge. Nothing happens. It's hot, boring, dry, etc. So luckily we don't have that. Um, and then let's see, extended outlook. I don't see that developing anytime soon through the end of July. So that's good. All right, that just that gets us through the rest of this month not not being too shabby. All right, so let's take a look at some thunderstorms and showers today. Again, there's that activity out there this morning picked up by the model data. All right, let's go to later on today. So here's 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So you can see kind of a resurgence along that little convergence line across the, the northern uh, parts of the state and then out here to the uh, west. It also favors that region as well uh, for 6 o'clock in the evening. There's 7 o'clock. Uh, there's 8 o'clock. Uh, there's 9. And there's 10. And there's 11. And there's midnight. So there you go, just little kind of two favorite areas, kind of one in this region and one in this region for some isolated activity for late this afternoon and during the evening hours, slowly dying out uh, around the midnight time frame. And then as we head on into tomorrow in the morning, a little hint of some isolated shower activity there in northern uh, eastern Oklahoma and also maybe a little bit in northwest Oklahoma. As we head into the afternoon for our Friday, as we start off our weekend, once again, just a few little hints of some shower activity there. Otherwise, a pretty decent thunderstorm signal in northwest Oklahoma for the afternoon. And now remember, this time of the year, these thunderstorms typically go up and they come down. So they can produce a pretty significant downdraft. 
AKA a microburst, AKA wind damage. So keep that in mind. Summertime storms can carry a little punch with them. They usually don't carry much hail, but it will carry some wind. Anyways, that's six o'clock Friday into the evening hour. So if you have any evening hours, it's much drier than it is for this evening. A um, lot less of an opportunity for any rainfall at all, according to the data. All right, and then we head on to Saturday morning, a repeat here in the morning hours. Kind of the same area, it's kind of a favorite spot here over the next couple of days across northern Oklahoma. There's a 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, so maybe a couple of light showers for you. As you get out there, try to do some yard work as we kickstart our full-fledged Saturday activities. And then on Saturday evening, things look mostly dry uh, across the state. And Sunday's, I think, pretty much dry as well. Uh, winds are pretty much light, uh, south-southwest. Occasionally, they'll get up to around 20 miles per hour, but not a very big windy event. Now, anytime you do get underneath some of these thunderstorms, it can be quite heavy. So, model data shows right here, like, like for example, that's that big cluster we saw up in northwest Oklahoma for Saturday, uh, and that was our first, excuse me, Friday, and that was like two inches of rain there. So, you can get some very heavy rainfall in these, and that can lead to brief flash flooding if you're in a, a, a flooded-prone region. Okay, temperature-wise, let's get to that, and we'll wrap it up for you. So, for today, temperatures topping out into the mid to upper 90s, basically across the eastern um, half of the state, whereas the western half of the state should be either at or maybe slightly above 100 degrees in some cases. And then on Friday, let's take a look at that. High temperatures on Friday. Uh, also into the mid to upper 90s of the same area with low 100s uh, out across western, northwestern Oklahoma. The, some of the hot spots, you know, where you have the, the wheat harvested, etc. A lot less vegetation. You're up around 105 maybe, uh, northwest Oklahoma. On Saturday, we're going to kind of rinse and repeat, so not a big change in the weather. Uh, again, upper 90s here mostly across the central eastern Oklahoma with your 100s kind of come up to the north and west and also down to the south and west. So here in between, you kind of split the difference anywhere from 96, 97, 98 degrees here in Oklahoma City uh, for our, uh, our atmosphere for today and also for tomorrow. This starts with tomorrow. Uh, but same kind of deal, not really changing a whole lot over the weekend. And then like we talked about next week, might have a nice little pattern change for us with that northwest flow aloft, which will allow at least a decent cold front to come in and opportunities for rainfall. So that means temperature is much better in the evening hours and daytime highs also only into the low 90s. So looking pretty good there as well. And that is what I have for you. So just want to bring you up to speed, let you know I'm still breathing. <laughs> so hope you're doing as you're doing well. I hope everybody had a good fourth, a good holiday. Uh, everybody's back to work, trying to get caught up on you know what you got behind in. That's the only bad thing about vacations and holidays. You go too long, and now you got to work twice as hard just to catch up. Um, by the way, see Elizabeth from Mustang checking in. Bill, thank you from uh, clearing out in Northwest Kansas. Say hey, Rhonda, Tiffany, thank you for the stars for our lunchtime. Uh, John, I appreciate the the compliment there in Texas. Uh, Bill, thank you for the stars. Uh, Shelly from Ada, Hope and Owasso. So, Christy, I know. it's a, If you say it's too hot now, <laughs> you might as well just call it. Uh, we're, we're, we're stuck like this. And Jody goes, well, how long is this weather going to last like this? I said about late September. <laughs> she goes, what? I didn't sign up for this. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, you know, for a Canadian, that's, that's not uh, normal. They don't, they don't get this kind of heat for this kind of long. They'll get a little taste of it. Just a little taste, and, you know, that lasts about a month, and it's it's not even near this this uh, this crazy, um, but uh, it's just funny. Uh, Thacker from Noble. All right, good to see you. Okay, um, I think that was about it for me. Um, you guys have a great rest of your Thursday and a good weekend. Thanks for checking in for lunch, and uh, we'll talk again soon. We'll have more opportunities, a little bit for rain, and I'll try to get on off and on to kind of bring you up to speed on some of those. And. I think that's about it. So you guys have a great rest of your week and we'll talk again soon. Take care.